I'm so happy to see you here with me again as we continue our efforts to learn English idiomatic expressions. As a reminder, idioms are phrases that convey meanings beyond the literal interpretation of the words that are spoken. You may wonder why I keep making videos about various idiomatic expressions. If you're just starting out on your English language learning journey, it is more important to master the basics of grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. However, as you progress with your English language abilities, you will soon recognize that English speakers use idiomatic and slang language quite frequently in daily life. If you don't know what these phrases mean, it may make it more difficult for you to understand conversations being spoken around you. Alternatively, if you do master and understand these idioms, it can really help you to enhance your fluency and understanding of both English language and culture. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started with 25 more common idiomatic expressions and their meanings. Broken a sweat. Our first idiomatic expression of the day is broken a sweat. We use this phrase in reference to someone working hard at something or making an effort to do something. It references the idea that when someone physically works hard, their body starts to sweat. However, it can also be used for mental efforts. Since the word break is a verb, we do need to conjugate it to correctly fit into the sentence that we are using. For example, that was too easy for her. She's done and she never even broke a sweat. Stand on your own two feet. To stand on your own two feet means to be independent or self-sufficient. It is often used in reference to someone who is learning something new or a teenager who is learning how to become independent from their parents. For example, after I finished school, I had to learn to stand on my own two feet, so I got a job and found my own apartment. Like a charm. When something works like a charm, it works perfectly or has a successful outcome. For example, I followed the recipe step by step and dinner turned out like a charm. It's a deal. When someone makes a deal, they are making an agreement or accepting an offer. So when someone says it's a deal, they mean that the agreement has been finalized and there is no need for further negotiations. For example, okay, so you can do the dishes and I'll take the kids grocery shopping. When we're done, we'll meet up at the trail to go for a hike. It's a deal. Take a rain check. A rain check is a piece of paper that is given at a store when the store has run out of a certain item that you want because it has a good price. It allows you to go back to the store later and purchase that item for the same price, even if it is no longer on sale. We use the phrase, take a rain check, when we are unable to do something that someone has suggested at that time but would like to accept the invitation later. For example, I'm sorry, but I can't make it to dinner tonight. Can I take a rain check and join you next week? Take a back seat. The back seat typically refers to the seat in the back of a vehicle. Since it is the people in the front of the car that typically navigate and drive the vehicle, the people in the back seat don't have as active a role in the situation. The phrase take a back seat therefore means to take a less important or less active role in a situation. For example, he's taking a back seat on this project and letting Mark make most of the decisions. Take it with a grain of salt. When you take something with a grain of salt, you don't really believe what is being said. Often, it is because the person speaking may be thought to be exaggerating or adjusting the story to make themselves look better. When someone says that you should take something with a grain of salt, it means that you should be skeptical of what you have been told. For example, 
he tends to exaggerate, so I always take his stories with a grain of salt. Take it up. Taking something up means that you are pursuing or engaging in something actively. This phrase can be used to refer to something physical or a conversation. Because it can be used in these two different ways, I'm going to give you two examples. Number one, I don't know what was said. Please go take it up with him. Number two, I've always wanted to learn how to play the piano. Maybe I'll take it up this year. Out of line. When someone is out of line, they are behaving or speaking in a way that is not acceptable or that is beyond acceptable limits. For example, his comments were way out of line and he offended a lot of people. I think he's going to get in trouble. A thin line. A thin line between two things mean that there is a small or subtle difference between them. However, that small difference can have a big impact on other people around you. For example, there's a thin line between confidence and arrogance. Deal with it. If you're told to deal with it, it means that you need to accept or manage a difficult situation. Often, the person who is being told to deal with it is not happy about the situation and being told to deal with it may make them upset. For example, a mother talking to her daughter about a rule that the daughter does not want to follow may be told, I know that's not what you want to hear, but you'll just have to deal with it. Break the ice. This phrase can be flipped and used in multiple ways. For example, you may hear about breaking the ice or about something being an icebreaker. In both cases, it references something that starts conversation or makes a situation less awkward, particularly in a situation that someone may feel shy initially. For example, at the start of the semester, the teacher usually likes to break the ice by telling a joke, but I heard that this year she's going to play a game as an icebreaker. Cost an arm and a leg. When something costs an arm and a leg, it is understood to be very expensive possibly in a situation where the cost was unexpected or higher than normal. For example, I took my car into the shop to get that sound checked out and it's going to cost me an arm and a leg to get it fixed. Hit the nail on the head. When someone hits the nail on the head, they have described something exactly true or precisely. Often, this would be used in a situation when a person is trying to explain why a situation exists and if they explain it in a way that makes sense to everyone, they would be said to hit the nail on the head. For example, Sarah hit the nail on the head when she explained that our team needs to communicate better if we're going to achieve our targets. Spill the beans. If you remember in a previous video about idiomatic expressions, I explained the phrase, let the cat out of the bag. To spill the beans means something very similar, as it references revealing a secret or disclosing information that should not have been shared. For example, I can't believe he spilled the beans. The surprise is completely ruined. Kick the bucket. While kicking the bucket may sound innocent, it actually means to die. Therefore, you really don't want to hear someone talking about you kicking the bucket. For example, our cat kicked the bucket last night. My son is so upset. Caught red-handed. You can be described as being caught red-handed if you are caught while you are doing something. Usually, this would be used if you are caught doing something wrong or illegal. However, it can also be used in any surprise situation when you are caught doing something. For example, the thief was caught red-handed while stealing that necklace. I can't believe that he's saying he's innocent. The ball is in your court. 
The ball being in your court references sports, when a ball being on your side of the court means that it's your turn to hit it. Therefore, when the ball is in your court, it means that it is your turn to take action or to make a decision. For example, I've done everything that I can. Now, the ball is in his court. On the same page. Being on the same page as someone means that you are both in agreement or that you have the same understanding as someone else. This is often because of a shared perspective or shared values. For example, great, we're on the same page. We will try to find a direct flight from Vancouver. Take the bull by the horns. When you take the bull by the horns, you courageously confront a difficult situation directly. Often, this is in reference to something that you don't want to do or are afraid to do. For example, I decided to take the bull by the horns and ask my boss for a raise. Jump on the bandwagon. Usually, jumping on a bandwagon is used in reference to following sports teams, such as when a team is doing very well and suddenly they have a lot more fans. However, Really, it just means that someone is joining a popular trend or activity. For example, after seeing all of their friends start to wear yoga pants to school, they decided to jump on the bandwagon and start wearing them too. Out of the blue. When something happens without warning, we call it out of the blue. We would typically hear it used when it, something happens that was unexpected or sudden. For example, she just called me out of the blue. I couldn't believe it. Give someone the cold shoulder. If you're ever upset with someone and ignore them intentionally, you may be said to be giving them the cold shoulder. This means that you are intentionally not paying attention to them or speaking with them even if they are trying to speak with you. For example, ever since our argument, he's been giving me the cold shoulder. He won't even look at me. Jump through hoops. The phrase jumping through hoops is used to express the idea that someone had to go through a lot of effort or through a lot of steps to achieve something. It is often used when someone is trying to fill out paperwork. For example, some kind of forms for the government. For example, I had to jump through a lot of hoops to get my visa approved, but now I'm finally here. Straight from the horse's mouth. When something comes straight from the horse's mouth, it means that you heard the information directly from the original source rather than indirectly through other people. For example, I can confirm that she's engaged. I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. There you have it, everyone. 25 more common idiomatic expressions that will help you sound more like a native English speaker. By understanding and using the expressions that you've heard today, you will have stronger communication skills that allow you to express yourself more naturally and effectively in different situations. Keep practicing these expressions in your daily conversations to improve your fluency. If you're ever unsure if you are using them correctly, ask a native English speaker. They'll be happy to help. These expressions are not only useful in everyday conversations, but they also add depth and nuance to your English proficiency. Thank you for joining me today. And until next time, happy learning.